Um, we'll start the meeting. And who it, from PMA will be uh, sharing their screen, so. That will be me. And. Megan. Megan? Yep. It's all, it's all those guys with women with the, with the bandstand. <laughs> cool. right, Megan, you have okay. them all. Are you all set, Megan? Let's see. Okay, yes, I'm good. Okay. All right, whenever you want to start. All right. Everybody can see that all right? That looks good. Yep. Yes. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Chris Carroll. I'm an executive director with PMA Consultants and I've been with PMA since 1992. And my primary job is to oversee our OPM group uh, to make sure that we do the best we can on each and every one of our jobs for our clients. Uh, we really appreciate you giving the opportunity to PMA tonight to present our cred credentials and uh, hope that we answer your questions and uh, relate our experience to you clearly. Uh, PMA was established way back in 1971, and we still operate under our founding, uh, Dr. Guy Ponce, de P Guy Ponce de Leon, sorry about that, <clears throat> who's actually still involved on a daily basis as our CEO. And I like to highlight that because of our resume of 49 uh, school projects, uh, they've all been successfully performed by our Braintree Boston office. And our resume is not a conglomeration of uh, projects that have been gained through hiring or mergers or acquisition. It's projects that have been done by our staff. And as a point of fact, Kevin, our team, and myself have had direct involvement in all 49 of those projects as PMA. So it's, we think that's a very important factor that PMA brings to the table its resume of projects that it has performed. Uh, it's also important to note that of those 49 projects, 30 were full build, and the other 19 are the equally important as uh, accelerated repair projects. Uh, tonight, we're presenting a solid team for Wakefield. Uh, Megan, if you flip the next slide. Uh, obviously, you'll see us on the uh, Zoom and also here. Uh, we're bringing you a solid team of OPMs that have been hand-selected for this project. Uh, we think they're best fit for this project and will be able to best serve you guys as a client and make this project a success. Uh, again, I'm Chris Carroll, and I'll let the team do a quick intro of themselves, starting with Joe. Hi, everyone. I'm Joe DeSantis. Uh, first and foremost, I'm a Wakefield resident. Proud to announce that. I'm a uh, director at PMA Consultants. I've been with the firm for eight years. Hey everyone, uh, I think you all know me, but Anthony Lopresti have been with PMA Consultants for six years and I'll be project manager on this project. Hi everyone, I'm Marco Zappala. Um, I've been with PMA for two years now and I'll be your project representative slash project manager. Good evening committee members. Uh, my name is Nick Massey. I will be uh, one of your project managers and I've been with PMA for two years. Hi everyone, I'm Megan Murphy. I've been with PMA for about seven years now as the marketing lead and I'll be supporting community outreach. Thank you, Megan. Okay, and my name is Kevin Nigro. I'm the managing director with PMA. I'm going on my 18th year uh, with PMA uh, and proud to say that of all the people on the screen with me, they are all active uh, people that have worked on projects with me and this team has all worked together so I think that's worth noting. And it's not just this team. Here's our old chart. And I just want to point out a few key people that aren't here tonight. We didn't want to put too many people on the call. But we'd like to point out that we have uh, Natalie Robichard, a PE in our office that will be charged with uh, MEPs, uh, fire protection and commissioning reviews from feasibility rights for construction documents and beyond if we need her. We've also supplemented the team with Cody Gibb. He is a geotechnical uh, engineer in our office. And we know that this uh, site does have some challenges with uh, rivers and wetlands and probably a lot of rock. And we also have Burt Brackowitz and, uh, who does design review, an architect that does design uh, review for us. Next slide. So you know us from the Greenwood Elementary uh, Accelerator Repair Program. We were lucky enough to be appointed uh, the 
MSBA selected us and assigned us to the town and, and that was great luck for us. And you also know that we are the OPMs for the Northeast Metropolitan Technical High School right up, up and right up on top of the hill. And we think that that's a benefit to the town of Wakefield and the Wakefield High School project as we will share knowledge between our own firm uh, from one end of the hill, from one end of Hemlock down to the other end. Uh, we think this has already shown um, some great, it's borne great fruit in that we've been able to coordinate some efforts with Steve Mayo, who's on our building committee. And we've taken into account what's important to Wakefield already in the new access road for the Vogue. Um, we're trying to vision what will happen to Hemlock. And we've also, if you see on the right hand side, we've also decided to carve out a little piece of property for maybe a future project. So we'll go to the agenda. Um, you were kind enough to send us questions. So what we decided to do is we're just gonna answer the questions. You know about us from the SOQ and our intros and we're just gonna jump right in and answer these questions. And we ask you to be interactive. If something we say catches your attention, you wanna ask us, we don't mind if you interrupt us and just ask away. Um, maybe let us go a little longer into the 30 minutes if that happens, but please feel free to interject. So uh, we want to jump right into the question, uh, right into the questions. And I'm going to hand it over to Anthony, question one. So, you know, the first question we're asked to discuss was how does PMA Envision work with the PVC, who as a representative of the town is a very involved donor. So of course, first off, working on that Greenwood Accelerator Repair Project, I can attest that you guys are a very experienced group and a very involved owner, which is a great aspect and a great uh, tool for the Wakefield High School project. You know, the project like Wakefield High School, it's a very complex, vast project with a lot of moving parts and a pretty quick time schedule. So having that experience from a committee who has done construction projects, who understands the complexity of construction and has done MSBA projects, really the value of that is immeasurable. Um, so you can rely, and in addition to the PBC's experience with the MSBA, you can rely on PMA's experience with the MSBA. So, as Chris noted earlier, we've done over 40 projects with the MSBA, uh, 49 to be exact, 30 of them fully complete new builds. And we know the PBC has done numerous projects with the MSBA, the Galvin Middle School in 2015, the pre-feasibility study in 2016, which really wasn't an MSBA project, but more so was to get the high school into the MSBA process, and then the accelerated repair project last summer. So we understand you're up to speed with MSBA, but even since 2017, there's been 30 plus project advisories, which is essentially informational updates and changes to the MSBA process. Of those 30, there have been three that have hit the educational program and two that have hit the space summaries, which are key aspects early on in the development of the project. So we'd like to get the PVC up to speed right away on those changes and make sure that we have a smooth process all the way from hiring the architect all the way to a project closeout. And in addition to that, you can rely on PMA on those second and third columns there for meeting attendance and project updates. The PBC can expect PMA to essentially be at any meeting they want. Uh, and we want to be there. You know, there's absolutely no limits to which meetings we'll attend. We all live locally close to the project and we care about the projects. We want to keep the community involved. We want to get out there and get information to the community. That way they are a part of the process and everyone is excited about the project. Uh, so you can expect PMA to be there and provide regular updates, including these cheat sheet updates to specifically to the building committee. So they're up to speed. So if a constituent asks them a questions, they have the facts available to them. And if not, that they, they can reach out to us and we'll be there to supplement that. So I'll hand it off to Joe for the next couple of slides. Thank you, Anthony. So kind of like Anthony was saying, generally the MSBA process follows a very specific sequence of steps. And as you get into it, you're gonna find that your selected OPM is gonna be uh, conveying a lot of information to you with a lot of acronyms flying around. Um, we understand that the Permanent Building Committee is very busy and that though Wakefield High School might be the biggest project you have, it'll be far from the only one. Um, all that said, a tool that PMA's found really useful for our clients is for us to, after we give a presentation, after the architect gives a presentation, uh, it's for us to leave behind one of these one pagers that's shown here. Um, just again, summarizing everything in a concise way as possible. We understand how busy the committee is and we can't reasonably expect for you to remember everything that we say during these presentations. Um, so we have two examples here, um, one on this slide and one on the next. This particular one pager was distributed to the Northeast Metro Tech School Building Committee to summarize the MSBA designer selection process. We included this one here intentionally because if PMA is elected, um, selected, I mean, sorry, uh, for this project, that's gonna be the first thing that we have to jump into. Um, the MSBA designer selection process is not a very straightforward one. And it ultimately boils down to three representatives for the town of Wakefield, 
versus 13 MSBA designer selection panel representatives votes in deciding who the architect for this project will be. This particular PMA team has a spectacular track record of preparing our clients so that when you walk out of that room, or maybe I should say when you leave the Zoom session, you've walked out with your number one preferred designer every time. Um, if time permits, we have some additional slides in the back regarding some additional helpful tools that we use. Um, and I should mention if PMA is selected, we're available to have a draft designer RFS for your review next Monday. Megan, could you go to the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, quickly, this is, this is just a, an additional example of a one pager from Northeast Metro Tech, and it sums up the ongoing CM at risk uh, construction manager procurement efforts. Um, so on top of these kind of summary reports that you see, what we also like to do is issue reports during construction, um, highly detailed eight page reports or plus containing photos. Uh, one of the best parts that we've seen of those are the before and after photos that people really like. We'll take a photo of the main entrance every month throughout the project. And within our monthly reports, we'll grab a photo from maybe five, six months ago and do a side by side. Um, and Megan, would you mind going on to the next slide? Oh, I think I hand it over to Kevin here. Thank you. Yes. So um, you've asked a question. This covers two bases. It's uh, how are we innovative at PMA? How are we going to assist the town and, and particularly the uh, permanent municipal building committee? And this is a value added that um, we have just started instituting. This is what I like to call our two blocks or our dashboard. We're going to set this up for the building committee. We'll give you um, uh, links that you can give to whoever you see fit that will have uh, information at their fingertips. Fingertips. You won't have to rely on those handouts like Joe said, because we can't leave them around anymore on the table for you to take home. So we're gonna create this dashboard and toolbox for you. And we're gonna show you how interactive it is so that you always know what's going on in this project. And this can be given to, uh, access can be given to uh, the administration, school administration, again, whoever you see fit. So Megan, if you click on our first phase, the MSBA, Again, from your laptop, from your cell phone, oh. your desktop. Oh, how can I go? Just someone sneezing, keep going. Didn't go. Can you see it? No. 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 If we've, if we've frozen up, we can certainly come back to it or move on either way. Oh, there you go. I'll try to reload. Okay, so what you're gonna see on that image, so, Again, from, from your, from your uh, mobile device or from your laptop, anywhere you want, you'll be able to click on that box. And what it would show you is that uh, it has all the, M here you go. Oh, here we so go. we click on it and here's your steps in your MSBA process, your PSR, your PDP, schematic design. And we have tabs for just about every participant on the project. And what you see is these are the steps needed to complete the MSBA modules. You have them in graphic form, there'll be a timeline associated with your project. But more importantly, here are the actual steps from the MSBA contract. These are the items that we need to check off in order to move, to get approval from the MSBA and move on. You'll see there's a column for designer, MSBA, OPM, and owner. Rest assured, anything in the owner's column, we'll be assisted by uh, PMA. We'll give you best products that we've seen before, templates, and anything we need to have you move this process along. Uh, Megan, if you go back to the home page. As this program grows and as we get approvals and move on, most important is going to be budget information. If we click on the budget information, we want you to have this at your fingertips as well as the finance department, Steve Mayo, his bond council, anyone you need. This is an example, an actual example of one of our cash flows. It has projected cash flow versus uh, actual spent. It's by month. You can get it by day. You can get it by year. And then you have your summaries. If you just need it, you're heading to a meeting and you need a quick snapshot. What's our forecast? What's our actuals? What's our cumulative? That's on your little dashboard to the right. Uh, and again, this will grow with the project. As we have more budget information, there'll be a budget page that you can click on. It'll give you a high level or a, a detailed for each, each line. Uh, Megan, if you go back to the homepage. Also from your homepage, we'll have project information. And right now it's rudimentary to show you what we can do for you but we anticipate this will grow. This project info tab, if you click on it, we'll populate this with whatever the PDC in the town needs um, to be able to share information uh, for you. So if you go to say the change order tab during construction, click on that. Here's a summary level of our change orders by uh, month, by trade, and by type. Is it a hold? Was it an owner initiated change? 
construction contingency? Was an allowance? Was there a credit? It's also part of our dashboard. You see the accumulated value per trade. And once again, on the right-hand side, you can sort by anyone you want. Again, a, a type of uh, cost event, a contractor, and so on. Uh, again, this could be catered to whatever you need to be able uh, to, to share information. Back to our dashboard, Megan. Another thing under uh, project controls be a re uh, under reports would be photos. In this COVID world we're living in, uh, people love to see progress. Sometimes you can't see it behind the fence. So what we'll do is upload as, uh, as much as progress allows from the first shovel that hits the ground. In fact, we'll be there at the groundbreaking right through when they cut the ribbon. And we'll put representative photos, as Joe said, sometimes from a perspective, you see how the, the project grows. This is in Sharon, Mass. Uh, where we mobilize, we're on site. We start cutting, that's Sharon High School in the background, which I will uh, say, um, very similar to your project in that it has a TV studio, a bank, steeped in arts, and we're building athletic fields as well. So that's a sample of our innovation and how we're gonna put this out for your committee to use in the town. Um, Megan, we're gonna turn it over to Chris. Yep. Thank you guys. Uh, so the next question, uh, Megan will pop that up, but it's related to the uh, longevity and uh, stability of PMA relative to projects. Uh, one of the things that we look at uh, from a uh, PMA perspective is we're on the project for the full duration that could be four to five years on a typical project. And Megan, if you go to the next slide, uh, what we do is make sure that our staff are the, the appropriate staff for your project. Uh, if you can see down the bottom right, the selected team, uh, the numbers represent how long we've been with PMA ourselves. Uh, clearly we've got a, a solid uh, staffing plan of folks that are local that'll be able to uh, make the project work for you. Under the MSBA, as Kevin mentioned and Joe mentioned, uh, we've done over 40 projects with the MSBA. Uh, Kevin and I have led all of those projects out of our Braintree office. So it's hands-on experience, firsthand experience. And we also have a proven team that's worked together in multiple projects uh, that we list there, uh, Northeast Metro, uh, Saugus, Essex, North Reading, Danvers, Somerville, Wakefield. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're looking at a team that's proven. Uh, PMA does not seek to hire bodies for jobs. We have staff that we hire for the, the long term. Uh, if you go to the next slide. Well, this is a fun slide I wanted to show you, and it goes to this uh, teaming approach. I've, I say we, our team and the company has passed on several projects because we want to work in Wakefield. Is we that North Reading? I'm sorry? Yes, it is. That looks like North Reading. There it you is. go, Wayne. That's Main how Street. Cool, how cool is that? So, yeah. as I said, this is uh, a team that I chose and Chris allowed me to. This is the team that I'm working on on four other projects that have all similarities to yours. This is a team that I want to go into battle with. And it wasn't uh, someone like Chris said that we just picked up on a resume. Is that, that gentleman on the right there? John Lyons. John he Lyons. was a tough cookie. So what I can tell you about this is you look at Joe on the left, who's now a director. That was Joe before he shaved. <laughs> there's there's uh, Anthony in the middle. At this time, I think Anthony was just being brought on board to PMA. But what I want to tell you is that I identified these... Uh, these people as interns and co-ops, threw them into the jobs and it was sink or swim. You're gonna perform me or not and I'm gonna decide if you're, if you're ready for this job. But you have to know how to put a building together first before you can manage one. So they start in the field and we partner them with an expert like John Lyons on the right hand side who mm -hmm. has over 30 years of construction experience. And that's why I'm confident in this team. They've mm -hmm. now grasped the construction means methods and on top of the project control. So this team was picked with purpose by me. And again, I, we bypassed some jobs because we want to work on this project. Next slide, Megan, thank you. Um, stability is another issue. What if someone were to leave? Uh, we believe strongly in redundancy on each project. Uh, on this case, you'll have at the higher level, uh, Kevin, Joe, and myself in the leadership roles. And then at the project management level, you'll have Anthony, Marco, and Nick all there. Uh, it's important that we have all of our staff up to date and informed. We set up emails for the project so that all of our team members get the emails related to the project and there's no learning curve. 
And we also have an office that's got over 30 OPMs and MCPPO certified uh, folks in the office. And as Mr. Hardacker may remember in North Reading, we had a couple employees that actually left our employee. Right. We were able to quickly replace them with what I would consider probably better staff uh, to help keep that job moving and get it done. So I, I, we, I agree. We have, uh, we have a strong office and a, a firm belief in making each project redundant with staffing to ensure that stability. Next. Because of the, and I, if I jump in, Chris, because of the sharing of information, Joe, Anthony, and I were able to hit the ground running in North Reading when called upon. We never skipped a beat and the job finished on time and under budget. Great project. True, true. Thank you. So uh, the next slide shows a couple things. It shows the schedule for the projects that we have. And it also reflects that each of our staff, depending on the level of their involvement, as well as uh, the nature of the phase of the program, uh, each of our OPMs will be working on more than one job at a time. As it trends towards construction, we'll end up having staff full-time during construction on a, on a job. But working up to that, uh, we'll, they'll be engaged on multiple projects, either in design phases or, or later design or close out in construction. And you can see that reflected here with the schedule. And what it's important to show is that the projects that our team are working on here, which is represented by this graphic, uh, the jobs are all winding down, which free up these staff to be fully engaged with the uh, Wakefield High School project. And if you go to the next slide, as Kevin pointed to right up the hill from you is the uh, Northeast Metro. And uh, one of the key factors there is that will enter construction while the other school is probably underway. And early construction will have staff on there and then the uh, Northeast Metro staff will join that project as the construction really gets going uh, in 2025 and on. So uh, we have a good plan, we have a good staff, uh, and they would be fully dedicated to your project. Next slide, thank you. Okay, so question number three, asking about our experience helping towns with community outreach. Uh, so we do this all the time, uh, we're happy to partner with with cities and towns and helping to share information with the community. This picture here is for Rockland Elementary School at Rockland Day. We're with the superintendent and the school building committee chair. So we do these things all of the time. Um, and it's important to, to start sharing information pretty much right away. It's never too soon to be transparent with the community. So you have a project website, which you can start right away. Social media is really big, especially Facebook. And anytime you can use video and or attend local community events and community forums, that's always really great. Uh, so I'm going to pass it over to Anthony, who's going to talk a little bit more about project websites. Thanks, Megan. So again, what Megan said, we want to hit the ground running and, and getting a dedicated project website for Wakefield High School is going to be critical for community involvement and outreach. So the example here shown is the Northeast MetroTech current building project website. Essentially, everything from the MSBA process to building committee agendas, to press releases all the way through full MSBA design submissions of 300 plus pages of existing conditions all the way to the 30 various different studied options that were reviewed. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, kind of key point of this dedicated project website is we want the community to be able to go somewhere where they know they can find factual information about the project if they have a question. And if it's not on the website or they can't find it, they, they can contact us there directly. That way we can get them that information. And really this dedicated project website really creates a transparent process from the district and the PVC to the residents of Wakefield. Uh, so that's a critical point we want to get the uh, hit the ground running on right away. You can go to the next slide, Megan. Mm -hmm. And team, I think we got about eight minutes left just so you can time your effort. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I'll just breeze through these next ones. This is just a screenshot from Rockland Elementary School. It shows their building committee that was posted on Facebook with their Zoom meeting. And you can see that over 3,000 people saw the post. So just to kind of show the impact of what social media can have on these projects some example posts that just um, hit on the topics, the questions that people have most. They wanna know what, what it's gonna cost them, how is it gonna impact their taxes and having that information readily available for them on social media and on a website is gonna really help um, in making people feel that they're informed when it comes time for a vote. Great things that you can do on Facebook. Here's just one of them. You can, you can make polls and surveys and kind of survey the community to see what people like, what they don't like. It's a great way to collect feedback an easy way to collect feedback. Uh, here's an example, one of our projects we're doing um, 
Facebook Live tours of construction. So you can do Facebook Live for anything. So just another great way to kind of stay in touch with the community and, and keep them involved and, and keep them excited about the project, which is important as well. You know, recording all, all the building committee meetings and posting them on YouTube, sharing them on our community television, making sure that people have access to them if they can't attend is also important. And I'll, I'll pass it over to, to Nick to talk about the other community outreach things that we do. Thank you, Megan. Uh, on this slide, you'll see some of the community engagement events that PMA has been a part of. Uh, in the past, we've, we've seen that forums, open houses, town halls, uh, they've all been very successful with community outreach. Um, a simple booth may be the perfect opportunity for residents to, to get the answers direct that, to get the answers they're looking for directly from the source. Um, slide into the next slide, and we're crunched for time. Uh, you'll see we've listed some of the great annual community events that Wakefield hosts. Um, being born and raised in Wakefield for 25 years and haven't experienced this parade for just about every year. I know how popular it gets, so uh, we're going to make sure to, to fight for some space amongst the chained up chairs and uh, we'll be there to answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, this goes back to me, Kevin. It's what makes our OPM company unique in the service we'll provide to the town. Well, um, we can sum it up in, the, in these five fingers and, and on top of our um, uh, innovation that we showed you on our project toolbox and dashboard, it's our history. Again, we're owners project managers first and foremost. We all happen to be engineers, architects, construction managers, MBAs, all versed in construction, but we work for the owner. Uh, we have a local presence. This whole team is within 10 miles of each other. Our reputation, we are ranked on engineering news record. I'm sorry, I don't remember the number, uh, but we're nationally recognized as project controls um, and uh, project managers. We have an approach that focuses on the educational plan. The educational plan should form the school and the design, not the other way around. Architects need to learn and will know from us that they're designing the school that fits the Wakefield educational plan and what you want. Um, we have uh, innovation too. Our innovative dashboard, what did you show you? But I'd also like to point out some of our in innovation and in competitive edge is that we are Primavera P6 providers and trainers. We also train uh, public agencies and private agencies in project controls. Some of our municipal clients are Massport, uh, MassDOT, and Eversource that we go in and we train their staff, their in house PMs. Also an innovation is net point and net risk. We have developed PMA over the years, our own scheduling software called NetPoint. It's a graphical user interface that will make schedules and, and bring them out to you at the building committal level. But we've created a new module called net risk. We're executing this right now in Sharon. Instead of waiting, we have a baseline schedule and instead of keep rejecting, 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 and then fighting each month saying it doesn't meet the logic, it doesn't meet our scheduling spec. We've partnered with Consigli right now up front and we've had four risk sessions where we've modeled their baseline contractor, uh, baseline schedule, and we've run simulations, basically crashed it to see where it failed. And then Consigli goes back and builds their schedule that we can approve and monitor throughout. And that's already borne fruit in that we've identified at least three risks that would have been deal breakers in money and in schedule, schedule loss. I'm going to send it to Joe, please. So I'm really strapped for time here. I um, had a lot to say on this slide. I, I think I think what I'll quickly just point out is that we could have included this slide on any of the prior questions. You know, it has to do with working with the committee. It has to do with getting information out to the public. But we included it here in our response to question number four because we feel that one of our biggest differentiators amongst our competition is our detailed understanding of the MSBA grant process. Um, so we have additional slides queued up for the Q&A session that go into more detail on this, uh, especially given our time constraint right now. We did want to point out quickly on this graphic, um, there's a trend right now that the gap, um, this, so this graphic is from MSBA cost data available online. And it's a screenshot of an interactive data table where you can hover over it. It shows you what each one of these projects are and their cost per square foot as it relates to their bid date. Um, so we drew two yellow lines there. The top one represents the average construction cost of these projects. And the lower one represents the MSBA participation limits in terms of cost per square foot. What we wanted to point out here is that there is a gap that's widening, kind of like an alligator's mouth, if you can see it, over time that construction cost escalation is outpacing MSBA reimbursement. 
Um, and we really wanted to point that out as it relates to having gone through the Galvin project for you guys, where it was a lot closer. It was closer to $45 per square foot difference, resulting in about an $8.3 million that weren't considered eligible. We are preliminarily estimating that this could go up almost 10 times to 80 million in eligible dollars. So PMA is gonna to have to really do what we can to maximize your MSBA grant with our knowledge of that, um, with our knowledge of that process. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. I'll, um, I'll try to move through these last two slides pretty quickly. Um, but Wakefield High School is a passion project for our team uh, with Nick being a Wakefield native, uh, Joe living in town and the rest of our team living so close. Uh, we, share, we share a strong desire with you um, to build a brand new high school where students can grow and learn. Uh, we wanna build something special and something that we can all be proud of. So when we drive by uh, years from now with, with our families, we can brag and, and look and say, hey, that was uh, something we were part of. Um, we're, we're also very local, so we can attend meetings and events um, at a moment's notice. Uh, we know the area through our work and through our personal lives and can provide strong community outreach um, in order to move this project forward. Uh, Megan, you can go to the next slide, please. Thank you. PMA has implemented um, cost control strategies uh, for change order reviews. We begin by verifying the uh, legitimacy of the change order, and then we compare time and material slips against certified payrolls. We approve labor rates and we compare unit material costs versus uh, labor hours and change orders on our past projects. Our team has worked with many of the same subcontractors um, throughout our careers, and we're aware of the tricks that they try to play in order to increase their fee on change orders. Um, this table represents our specific project team's level of effort uh, for change order reviews during the construction phase. Uh, unlike many other OPM firms who rely heavily on the design team uh, for review and comments, PMA actually leads the charge. Uh, we maintain a potential credit log for a scope that was never performed or um, that was deleted uh, to offset costs where possible. And this is all in order to, to uh, maximize the total savings back to the owner. Um, high, looking at this table at a high level, uh, we've saved $3 million to the town of uh, Saugus and almost $100,000 to the town of Danvers. Uh, PMA success in analyzing change orders has allowed our clients to obtain wants that were never really included in the original budget such as additional FF and E um, and increasing the size or, or the high or adding high end finishes. Um, we've received feedback from, from um, CMs and design teams actually when we're during, during the change order process and they say um, PMA actually goes well far beyond uh, all of our other OPMs on our past jobs. Um, and we, we believe this is what sets us apart from our competition. Um, and like these projects and our past projects working with you, we'll fight for you on every change order. Um, I believe Nick and Anthony have had similar yeah, success yeah. on Somerville and on Saugus at Belmonte School. Yeah, so real quick, Eric. Now, just a, it's a small sample size, but you know, I think the whole committee was kind of aware with the Greenwood project, the kind of disputed ownership of the gravity events for that project. And with Chip and Joe's blessing, PMA was uh, allowed to engage directly with the contractor and make that 45 grand disputed claim change order go away for a net cost of zero dollars to the town. So again, it's you know it's fighting for the town's money and really making sure that taxpayer money is not spent unwisely. If, if I may interrupt, your your time is yeah. Uh, I think we're done anyways. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Time. Next slide, Megan. There you go, Kev. There you go. Now we were gonna leave, we were gonna um, open it to the question and answer period before we closed it out. All right. But Joe, you saying we, do we use up all our time? I apologize. Yeah, you have. Oh, jeez. You used up our 30 is what he meant. Uh, you still have Q&A time. It's all good. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. Understood. Yeah. So before, I'm not going to close it. I'm, we're going to kick it over to you. That's just, we're going to leave this up in the background. Hopefully we'll have time to explain how uh, we've already mapped out your, your first phases of the MSBA and how we think we can, or we know we can complete it on time. Okay. I would prefer if you brought that down so we can see everyone. Okay. Thank you. I have a quick question, Joe. Go ahead, Chip. You want to go first? Sure. It appears to me that you may have worked uh, with TAPE at some point. Can you tell me what project that was and how it went? Uh, we're currently working with TAPE on Sharon 
and I think Joe with you on Danvers. That's right. And, and also uh, in Saugus on the master plan. Yep. And, oh, geez. Uh, okay. and I can tell you, Chip, that I also, uh, back when I had Brown here and 50 pounds ago, uh, down in 1996 and seven, I worked with Tepe on the Saugus Public Library and in 2000 on the Saugus Veterans Elementary School. I just saw the slide with you and it might have been you and Charlie. I wasn't sure who it was with Charlie. And I was that like, is Joe and that, Charlie. So that my looks, experience that looks familiar. So my experience in the direct parallel of Sharon High School is so similar to Wakefield High School in the makeup of the school, the additional um, spaces in it that we're going to have to fight for eligibility for, like the TV studio, um, the, the enhanced drama spaces, things like that. And uh, how's Tape doing? Fine. We have principal interest. We have Chris Blesson and Charlie Hay when we need them. I think our drawings are uh, good, not great, they did good um, so far. It's too early to say. But we're confident in them based on where we are right now. We're basically coming out of the ground a couple of weeks ahead of schedule with structural steel and the foundations went in with one minor change order. Great. And in Danvers, the change orders have been extremely minimal and um, Tepe's done a fantastic job. So that's another question I have, which is comes to change orders and how you guys manage them. I, I mean, I know how we manage them on the accelerated project, but you know, this is not an accelerated project. No. So uh, talk to me a little bit about change orders, your attitude on them and how you handle them. So um, I'm going to kick it off by saying, I'll go back at that, that chart we showed. My attitude and what I hope I instilled in, in my the team that I've that have tutored on and, and, and they've excelled at is it's our money too. And, and it's not just a, a saying. We treat every dollar as if it was our own. And I always tell the team, if you've got a contractor that has the nerve to put in $100 for a shovel, we have the nerve to take that $100 out and then some because that's two more Chromebooks. So we'll treat every penny. I, what did I say, guys? I'll squeeze a dime to get a nickel. So if anyone who wants to jump in and tell them, tell them how we dissect and tear apart a change order. Don't all jump. Can I throw something out? Yeah. One, one question I asked, what, what does PMA stand for? No one ever told me what that means. So originally it stood for Project Management Associates. And over time it's been reincorporated as we've grown. So now it's PMA Consultants LLC. And just... So everybody knows, I work for North, North Bend Public Schools. I know Kevin, Joe, and Chris. Um, can, how, how can you possibly handle the North East Vocational School and North Bend High School at the same time? Okay. Can I just, I want to answer Chip because I don't think we answered his question. Well, Chip, you uh, you our, better answer quick because you only got change order approach, seven Chip, minutes. First, it has to be justified. We go to the scorecard, plan, spec, is it owned? Is there a gray area? There is no gray area. We want black or white. And we want you to prove it. Then we jump into it from wage rates to markups. And then we'll get the estimators involved or the architect. And if we don't like it, we kick it back to them. We don't care how many times until it's resolved in, in favor of the owner. We Google so, every single piece of material that's included in the quote. And uh, as you asked that PMA question, it's funny. We've had um, plenty of acronyms thrown at PMA, pain in my, um, during change order <laughs> meetings. From the contract. So before we run out of time, Joe, I'm going to cut yeah. you off. So I want to answer, answer Wayne's question. So the question. team is so important. Yep. This, again, we this team, was. I didn't go after certain jobs to get this job. I typically have four to five jobs that I manage at the same time, along with Chris and redundancy. I have, there are two other managing directors and other directors. This was done with purpose. We think there's great benefit to both the VOC and Wakefield in the collaboration with neighbors, boards, commissions, are having to go up one end of the hill, down the other to collaborate with our own teams and not have to rely on the goodwill of another architect or OPM to share some information that might be about important deliveries during MCAS or when we're going to be blasting to make sure we don't interfere with the operations of the Volk or the Wakefield High School. Yes. And we are not overcommitted as that chart that, that Chris Carroll showed. We believe we have the right people and there'll be more brought on at the right time. I have I have a, a question regarding that with the, on the bulk. I uh, as being the owner's project manager and the, for both projects, I really uh, potentially see that there could be a conflict of interest uh, regarding those two, and not not necessarily collaboration. Um, uh, I 
that's a concern that I have. I'll be perfectly honest with you. To have have both, uh, uh, to have our own our own owner's project manager and the Volk owner's project manager be the same. That's a concern that I have because I do think that there will run, we will run into conflicts along the road. Where do you uh, see that? A, where do you see those conflicts, Joe? I'm just curious. Where do you think there'd be issues? <laughs> Just as, as far as our own uh, concerns versus the Volk's concerns, I could just see where we could run into issues left and right on many occasions where there's there's issues that they have and issues that conflict with ours. Well, Not I, only just schedule wise, but otherwise. I, no, I, I really, I really Joe, see that. Sorry you feel that way because we would have never gone, I wouldn't have never put into the project if I thought there wasn't a benefit or. I think that the check and balance is that Steve Mayo is on the building committee. Right. And it's already been a positive collaboration and that we worked with the committee to identify problems that you're having at the Wayfield High School now and incorporated them already. Like we have a new access road that we're cutting off up a main street and farm that'll be signalized to take the pressure off of whatever happens down at farm and hemlock or whatever becomes of that road. Um, there's been some desire for the two, the two entities to maybe collaborate on a project in the future that we've set aside again with input from Steve Mayo. And I would like to think that uh, that Steve considers and that some of you consider the, the vocational school, you're contributing to it as one of your schools and you have a say. Um, I don't see the conflict. Um, it, it, uh, you'll never have, you'll never have to guess who we're working for on its behalf of the owners. Oh. And there is a lot of collaboration. I think that just it naturally has already taken place and will continue. The other question I had real quickly, there's a reference to this grant reimbursement. It's my understanding of, from what I understand, grant reimbursements are based on the percentage. Isn't that correct? So uh, I'll take that one. Uh, grant reimbursements are based on a percentage of eligible costs. So when we're, when we're discussing it's you, each town or city gets a reimbursement rate from the MSBA based on socioeconomic factors. And we have one. And we have one. Yeah. Right. And it'll be increased likely due to incentive points that you go after. Um, and it's something to change on a yearly basis. But it's what costs are considered eligible at that reimbursement rate is what we're talking about. Because of, say that you have a 55% reimbursement rate, due to that gap that I was showing on that graph of what the MSBA considers eligible in terms of construction versus what the actual costs are. All right. So you're, so rate, you're not you're talking about, closer to half. You're not talking about getting a greater a reimbursement yep. rate you're talking about the difference okay i wasn't clear in the I'm sorry. Cost so, yeah sorry i really had to rush through that yeah, yeah. They, you know they, they give you the rate say it's 60 percent. you know from your experience you know i only wish it was 60 percent well, yeah, i'm just saying it, it, it's going to be it's going to be a percentage of the eligible costs so what joe's point now is, is is that we work within the regulations we find gray areas. We find where we can interject things in the educational plan to make sure that we maximize and get as much of that $333 for every space that we can make eligible. Is there anybody else, members of the committee, have a we, question? I think we have a couple couple more minutes. Jim. Yes, we do. Uh, to, the, to the team, what's the toughest project you've worked on and why was it tough? I, From my perspective and Anthony, I would probably say Somerville High School has been the most challenging school we have. Uh, it's a old school built on a steep hillside in a city adjacent to a historic structure that was being uh, renovated, modified and demolished. Uh, and we're also adding new structure onto old structure. So it's just, there's so many complexities in working in the inner city hillside historic that uh, it's, it's just been a real challenging project. Yeah, yeah. I to add, to add to what Chris said, essentially you're, you're building a brand new school around an existing gym. You're doing 50 foot excavation cuts right next to buildings that are in operation. You run into old buried ACM pipes that you have to abate with DEP approval. It's, and it's a multi-phase project over numerous years. So. And we're fighting with, more. we're fighting with the green line extension as well for uh, access right to our, the site. Yep. Right against our property line. And there's not a lot of swing space. So it's been real challenging, but we're right there. Okay, Great, thank well, thank you, you very much. I'm afraid the time is up and we have another interview. Uh, we appreciate it uh, and uh, we'll get back to you. Thank, thank you thank all. You thank, you much. Much. Thank, thank you, guys. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Hey, Lynn. Hey, Tim. It's just me. Hello. Hey, guys. Hey. All right. Who is uh, Lynn? Who's who's going to be handling the? Uh... Uh, Linda's going to. Pardon? Linda's going to uh, do the presentation. Let's see if she's on yet. I don't think she's yeah. on yet. Yeah, I don't see her. Her and Jay are joining us. Okay. We have our guest. Yeah, I know. There's Linda. Hey, Linda. I don't. Oh, there you are. Okay. You're bringing up the presentation, Linda. I am. Yep. Great. Looks like Jay's joining us here. Mm -hmm. Hi, everybody. Hey. Hey. Shane, you want to start us? If, I guess let me start. Um, yeah, you got the presentation, Linda. Yes, I'm just trying to see which which one I should share. I think can everybody see it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. okay. So um, th thank you guys for for having us tonight. Um, we, we we have a presentation uh, for you guys. You can go to the next page, Linda. Um, just a, a quick agenda. There's nine items. We'll, we'll move through this pretty quickly. I know. I know you guys were on last night and, and again tonight. So uh, and we'll just start off with some background left field. We'll introduce the team and uh, we'll hit some of the questions you asked. Um, Could you so increase? I'll, I'll hand it right over to, to Jim Rogers, who's the uh, principal and owner of Left Field, to uh, to give you a quick introduction to the firm. Any chance yeah. you guys can make the slides bigger? They're looking pretty small on our end. Now we're only seeing parts of the slide. <laughs> yeah, um, I think you need to put it in clean screen, um, Linda, that doesn't show all the background. No, well, this is as large as it will let me. Huh. I think you're sharing the screen that's not the dis main display. Mm -hmm. It's like the. You want, you, want, you want me to try share it, Linda? Let me try this one. It's giving me two different options for sharing. Mm -hmm. That's no better. Um, do you want to let me, let me try it, Linda, maybe? Yeah, you can try it if you want. Uh, if you hey, want to try it, make your host. Yep. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Now just throw it in presentation mode. Yep. And we're good to go. So guys, my name is Jim Rogers. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm the principal of Left Field. Um, I want to thank you for inviting us tonight to present the team to you. Um, the Wakefield High School project has been on our radar for a while. It's a um, it's going to be a large, complex project, and with that, we've been you know we've invited a uh, hopefully a strong team to present to you tonight. Uh, left Field is one of the few uh, locally owned firms that's left in the Boston market. Uh, we've been around for uh, 14 years now. Uh, we've got 29 staff members working for us. Uh, we have four high schools that we're working on currently. Uh, we have 10 core projects that are, that are ongoing, with four being high school, five being elementary, and one middle school. Uh, we tend to, we, we have about $2 billion worth of projects ongoing now. 
and uh, we've uh, quite a few number of us here tonight have worked with the town of Wakefield previously. Both Lynn, myself, Shane, Jay, and Mark have all worked closely with the Permanent Building Committee and the Wakefield Public Schools uh, previously. Lynn, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, uh, Jim will be the principal in charge, but I'll be the project director. You guys mostly know me. Um, and I've been a registered architect for 37 years and have been uh, working uh, in the OPM field since the MSBA's inception in 2004. I'll be working closely with Shane and Linda um, as we found with these larger projects that it takes a project team to make sure that um, you know, that we end up with the most educationally appropriate and physically responsible school. And that doesn't only mean our team, but it means the PBC's team, the, the, the Wakefield Public Schools, as well as, as the town. It'll take all of us to make sure that um, this project is successful. Thanks, Lynn. And so it's good, good to see you guys. I know a lot of you, you, you folks are the former building committee with new faces. Uh, my name is Shane Dolan. I'm a uh, uh, host of the project management project. Um, I've got, I've got 25, 25 years of experience, 20 of those are in the institution. Shane, you have a slight echo. Lots of echo. Is that better? Is that better? No, no, no it sounds like it's echoing. Somebody's got an echo. Yeah, I'm not sure it's me. Yeah, if everyone wants to accept Shane, that might take care of the problem. So, well, still there, still there. And I'll try it. So, Shane, Shane Nolan, I'm proposing the project manager. Uh, I've got 25 years' experience in, in construction, 20 of those here in Massachusetts working on public construction. And um, like Lynn, I've been working with the MSBA since its inception in, in 2004. Um, I'm a chartered quantity surveyor with the Royal Institute of Quantity Surveyors. Um, I'm MCPPO'd. I, uh, I was one of the first graduating classes from the MCPPO program back in 2004. I've recertified four times now, uh, the most recent being in June of 2020. Um, I've worked on, on public uh, schools with the MSBA um, a non-MSBA schools for 20 years. Most recently, I was working on the Belmont High School. Uh, I worked through the feasibility and schematic design phase for that into the de detailed design up to, a, uh, up to a GMP agreement of a $240 million project in, in Belmont. I've also worked on Rockland High School and I've had six or seven other core MSBA projects. And uh, with that, I'll hand over to Linda. Thanks, Shane. Hopefully there's still no echo. <laughs> uh, hi, everybody. Uh, Linda Laporto. Um, I am um, a little bit newer on the uh, uh, left field team, um, but I've been in the construction industry for uh, close to 20 years now, um, mostly on the uh, actual construction side. So a little bit more in the trenches um, of the, the actual construction and management of projects. Um, I've worked for uh, um, a, uh, a GC company that I helped um, basically build um, a business from uh, the ground up, uh, working um, working primarily in the city and and um, out of the state, uh, some work in New York as well. Um, and so I'll be working with Shane, Lynn, Jim, and all the other wonderful team members we have here. Um, and uh, excited to be here and excited to, uh, uh, to see this happening. I'm currently working on a, uh, um, a different high school, the Revere High School, which is a, a, a couple of months ahead of you guys, but um, still um, interesting to see um, the similarities and, and see how it, it's gonna work. And uh, so thank you all for having us today, appreciate it. So Jay. I'm gonna turn it over to, to Jay. Jay. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. It's good to, good see, to you see you everybody. Again. Yeah. Um, my name is Jay Faxon. I've been Jim, Jim for uh, um, approximately eight, eight years now. And, and I have uh, two master's of license from the Department of Health and Safety in Massachusetts uh, and two other um, journeyman licenses. 
I'm still active in the trade, um, specialize in HVAC and MEP inspections. Thank you. Along with Jay, we have, um, can you back up one? We have a few other people on the team. Uh, Mark LaFleur will be our site representative. And uh, once the project gets well into construction, we likely will have another site representative as, as well due to the size of the project. We also have bring Matt Casey and Adam Keene to the table. They have a specialty in civil and structural um, it, with uh, Adam having um, a specialty in utilities and ut uh, connections with utility companies, as well as a host of other consultants that we'll bring in at the various phases of the project. So we've tried to organize our presentation based on your questions. So question one, how does your company envision working with the PBC, who as representative of the town is a very involved owner? Well, um, we, Leftfield will act as an extension of the PVC and we'll, we'll work closely with you, coordinate and collaborate with uh, not only the PBC, but with all of the project's stakeholders. I know the PBC very well and Shane is coming to know you guys well. Um, and I will say over the past 11 years that I've worked with you guys, I've always appreciated working together as a team. Um, you know, it, it's really, taken uh, all of us to bring the projects that we've worked on in the past together uh, successfully. And we look forward to uh, getting the opportunity to work with you again. Question two. Project. Project. Oh, oh. If everyone else can mute for a moment. This is a long duration project. How stable is your team and what is the backup plan if someone was to leave? So as I mentioned previously, we have been in business uh, left field for 14 years. And believe it or not, over those 14 years, I've lost exactly one employee. So I have to say I'm very lucky that way. Uh, we've come to you today with a team of uh, eight folks, as you can see in the, in the box there. Uh, we all have um, you know, over 20 years experience. So I think as a team, we work well together. Um, we tend to, um, with all our employees, we tend to, uh, part of our onboarding is, is uh, getting MCPPO certified. And of the 29 people we have on our staff, 22 are MCPPO certified. So if there was one person that was to leave uh, from the core team here, uh, we could pull from our, uh, from our other staff members um, who are, again, who are all working on, as I mentioned, 10 core projects right now. We could pull uh, from one of them um, over to the team, and I think we could continue working seamlessly. So we have a very experienced uh, a firm uh, that focuses mainly on MSBA projects, and I, I feel comfortable that uh, if God forbid one of our key people were to leave, we could we could draw from our from our group. And I think Jim, just to your point about uh, teams in general, uh, the left field team just works with a, a a team approach as we do to all of our projects. Um, and uh, we, we enjoy working together. We love our projects and, and uh, we tend to stay true to them and, and sort of live them through. And, and that's what we really want to do. Um, and if you look at the history of, of most people, we're, we're all senior people that have been in the industries for, for a long time. I, I jokingly said to Jim, I only switch jobs every 18 years. So you guys are stuck <laughs> with me for 18 at this point, at least. And I don't think you guys have been able to get rid of me for a while now. <laughs> um, for question number three, what is your experience working with the communities and assisting the town in developing a campaign to sell the project to the community? And what have you included in your proposal for the type of, of assistance? Well, we, we have found recently with the larger projects and the larger price tags uh, that they carry, that it's been very important to involve the community from the very beginning. Um, so what we try to do is from the very onset, try to kick the project off with um, keeping the public informed. And we've done this various ways on our other projects, but uh, we've, we've started out by developing a website and 
I will say our websites have come a long way from our Walton School website that I did myself. But, <laughs> but anyway, uh, on, the, on the website, we collect uh, emails from people that may be interested in keeping um, informed of the project. We send out um, email blasts that, uh, with various notifications and project information. We use MailChimp to do this. And also in the various um, deci crucial decisions and milestones of the project, we put out surveys elect, you know, to the community that they can fill out um, in, at their home and have input on the project so that they're constantly feeling as they are a part of the project. Also on some of our high schools in the past, we've used high school students, either from the graphic arts program or other programs within the school to help us with the various platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. And it's a good way to get them involved in the project and let them have a say. Um, in what's happening with their project. These are just uh, the various methods of um, keeping in touch with the, um, with the public. We've also on various cable TV um, programs, we've done interviews and he held project information meetings just to get it out there and um, inform the public, as well as on our website, we post our monthly reports and project information. And uh, can I jump in there real quick and just say sure. that we, we were just asked by one of our towns, um, I did a uh, local channel video of, a, of an older school that needed to be replaced. And we, we, we made a video of that school. I walked through it and noted all the deficiencies in the mechanical systems and in the uh, building envelope to help them push their project ahead. Jay's our resident um, celebrity in that aspect. <laughs> um, we I also- say that because we, we, We've never done that before. And that's, that's a, <laughs> time, times are changing, right? Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So uh, just on the screen right now is just a, an example of uh, what we would set up for uh, your school that we uh, we started. Um, obviously, it's, it's not published yet, um, but where we would uh, put all the pertinent information to the project so that the community and the students and, and everybody in the surrounding areas can uh, keep track and get updates and um, and it's also a fun way to um, present photographs of uh, updates as you hopefully get going at, during the actual construction. And uh, it's just a, a, a real nice way to keep everybody up to speed. Um, the fourth question that you, you asked was, um, what makes your OPM firm uh, unique in the services you provide. So we, we've listed a couple of the, uh, the, the bullet points we think make us uh, unique to other firms. Uh, one of them is the experience with the MSBA funded projects. Uh, we've been through several of those with the company. We have several that are ongoing right now. Um, we know the MSBA process and some of you might be familiar with it. I've shown it here. Uh, right now you're informing the team. We'll go through feasibility schematic and funding the project. Hopefully we, we get town approval, move on to the detailed designs. So we're very, very experienced with the MSBA. Uh, we bring that to the table and all our team, team members have worked with the MSBA in the past. Um, the range of projects we've worked on. Uh, to date, uh, as Jim mentioned, we've worked on a number of high schools, middle schools, elementary schools. We've also worked on the accelerator repair projects and also the science lab initiatives with MSBA. Um, many of those projects have, projects have meant that we, we look at options, um, either renovation, uh, renovation addition, and uh, new construction on existing sites where, uh, where buildings are occupied, where we have to come up with complex logistics plans, phasing plans, and uh, especially where, where renovation is, is um, involved, where, where, where kids and, and staff are in the buildings, we've come up with suitable plans for that. Um, and one, one thing that's unique, or one of the unique things we have is, is Jay and uh, our MR, MEP expertise. Um, Jay will come on board uh, early in the process uh, during the, uh, the design phase before any of the systems are, are approved. And uh, 
put into the design. Um, he will review the, the, the systems, make sure that they're uh, efficient, he will make sure they're easy to use, maintain. And uh, at the end of the project, he will make sure uh, together with the MSP, a commissioning agent, that they are working properly. And with that, I'll hand it over to Jay, maybe just to tell us a little bit about what you will do, Jay. Yeah, and, and just a just a comment on that there. Uh, the uh, the Walton School, um, we, we went back there long after the job is done. I, I made numerous uh, repeat visits back there for um, BMS training, for summer winter changeover training, um, any um, conditions, any issues they had. Uh, Jim would send me back out there and, and we were more than happy to help uh, long, long after the project was finished. And uh, the guys, I think, really appreciated uh, me coming out there and helping them um, with any issues they had six months to a year after the, that job was finished. Um, but uh, 20, 45 years as an HVAC guy and, uh, and, and my specialty is just trying, to, just trying to make sure that the contractor installs equipment uh, to the, the best of their ability and make sure that it's installed right and, and it's serviceable. And uh, I think we've, we've been doing a really good job of that in the last uh, eight years. Thank you, Jay. A um, couple of other points. Um, Left Fielders has worked with many of the, um, the Massachusetts um, organizations. We've worked with the Mass Schools Building Authority. As I said, we've worked with DCAM, worked with the University of Massachusetts Building Authority and also the Mass State College's Building Authority. We've also worked with a number of towns, cities and, and districts, uh, including the town of Wakefield, Waltham, Brookline, um, Lowell. So uh, we, we have, we've we worked throughout the Commonwealth and um, always been successful on any projects we work with, with, uh, with any of these organizations or uh, municipalities. Our past projects with um, the town of Wakefield have been the Galvin Middle School and the Walton School. They're both shown here. Um, and Shane's currently working on the Wakefield Public uh, Safety Building. Correct, yes. Yeah. So as you know, we're, we're working through the, the uh, schematic design. We'll be finished that in the next week or so. So um, we've enjoyed working with you guys in, in Wakefield on that project. And we just wanted to emphasize that we're ready to start work immediately and that we want to continue to build our relationship with the town of Wakefield. Correct. As, as, as uh, shown on that, that slide with our team, I'm the only project that I'm working on is the public safety building in Wakefield. So I have capacity to start immediately uh, upon appointment. We can uh, we can get going on this. I don't have any other projects. Make one more quick, quick, quick point about uh, Walton School. Is I remember going to a community meeting there with the, all the neighbors around, especially a couple of neighbors on the back side of that school, and meeting with them uh, in the evening and putting their fears to rest about the HVAC equipment. We got the quietest HVAC equipment out there. We we made it look, we camouflaged it. And I think everybody was very happy with the way that came out. So we go above and beyond and, and anything we need to do to uh, help our client. I think that just just to to add to, to Jay's comment, that's really what, uh, what answers the question about what's so unique with with left field is that we take the team approach both both internally and with our clients and as you hear comments from years back that's that's how everybody has been working and and will continue to work and are excited to work uh, to team up with uh with the different municipalities and the school systems and and towns and organizations uh, these are a few of our high schools or cu most current high schools um Three of these are, are complete or near completion and one's in construction and one's um, in feasibility study. Um, but I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about the Durfee High School project. It's a little bit similar to what I've heard uh, been said about the Wakefield High School project. Uh, we built the new school on the existing um, high school site and we decided to keep the, their existing high, um, field house and renovate it and build the new school around it and around their sports fields. And um, I know that that's been talked about in town in terms of keeping the field house because MSBA doesn't uh, participate in funding those, but they will participate in the renovation of them. Okay. These are a few of our other high schools that have um, 
long been completed. I just wanted to bring up the Wachusett Regional High School one here up in the upper right hand corner. Um, if you take a look at the roof areas of this high school, the light colored roofs are the additions and the darker color roof are the renovations of the high school. We doubled the size of the high school and we interspersed um, new additions in and around uh, the, the two courtyards that were there. At the end of the day, it, we doubled the size of the school and the enrollment capacity, but we also, what, what was really important, both inside and outside, it looked like a brand new school. These are some of our other current MSBA core projects as well. Um, the various elementary and middle school projects, a few of these have been completed, but um, this is, these are, these, all of these have unique challenges that we really feel will um, help, you know, that we'll, we may likely encounter on the Wakefield High School project. And it's always good to have the experience to draw upon. Um, so understanding the MSBA process, um, as you know, the MSBA are, are another partner on, on this project and they, they commit significant funds to the project through the reimbursement program. So we've been through that before and we know what the MSBA looks for. We know the staff at MSBA have worked with all their senior staff, have worked with their project managers and the uh, project coordinators at MSBA. And the initial appointments, uh, of, of the, the OPM, one of our first responsibilities will be to, uh, to continue forming the project team. That would be to bring an architect on board. And um, unlike the OPM selection, which you're going through right now, the, the architect selection is through the MSBA designer selection panel, which is a 15 person panel. And the town will be allowed to have three representatives on that. So we'll walk you through that program, make sure those three representatives have their voices heard at the MSBA designer panel and uh, make sure that you get the architect that, uh, that you want. Moving, moving on from architect selection, you go straight into feasibility study. And during the feasibility study, there's two major submissions to MSBA. The first one is the, uh, the PDP. Um, during the PDP phase, we'll, we'll look at the existing buildings. We'll, we'll do some research on the, uh, the ground conditions, the utilities and, and other stuff. It's really a fact-based uh, mission to, uh, to complete the PDP. Coming out of the PDP, we'll have a number of options uh, into the preferred schematic report or the PSR. And at the end of the preferred schematic report, we'll submit to MSBA with the town's preferred option, having looked at renovation, renovation addition, and new construction. And after the preferred schematic report, we, we go to the MSBA board meeting. Pending their approval, we'll move into schematic design for that preferred design, uh, whatever the option is. And the uh, schematic design is a very important uh, phase. That's when we'll actually start to set the budget. We'll, uh, we'll come to an agreement on budget with MSBA and we'll, we'll set what's called the uh, project scope and budget agreement, which uh, really sets the foundation of what MSBA will reimburse, how much they'll reimburse and what the project is gonna look like. And coming out of that, they're securing the project funding. That's when we'll go to town for the, uh, the uh, debt exclusion um, or whatever. Um, mechanism you will use to fund the project. Uh, we'll work it through that. We've already talked about our public relations and what we'll do to get the, uh, the word out to the public throughout the process. But those are the, uh, the initial phases in the MSBA process that um, the OPM will be hired from for now. Moving out of that, then we'll go into design, detailed design construction, and finally occupation project closeout. Um, we have put together a, uh, a draft schedule here. It's conceptual. Uh, you can see we, we look at forming the team. We'll, we'll look to get an architect on board sometime mid-summer. And um, after that, we'll move straight into the preliminary design program. As I mentioned, that's probably a 12-month uh, period after which the MSBA will, will take three weeks to review that. We'll move straight into the preferred schematic report, another 12 weeks or so to do that. Um, MSBA will, will review that, we'll go to their board, pending approval, we'll move straight into the schematic design. Again, an MSBA review after that, and then we go back to the to board of directors for the, uh, the project scope and budget agreement. Um, I'm showing a, a 22 month schedule here. I think we can probably reduce that by a couple of months. Um, folks familiar with the MSBA, the board only meets every two months. So, um, you know, we, we, we've showed a, uh, a board meeting in October of 2022 here I think depending on the, the designer we pick and how, how quickly we move through the options and decide on an option, 
we may be able to cut two months off that and go to the old August board meeting. We'd be looking to get a town vote um, at your fall town meeting in fall November. 22, yes. Yes. These are a few of the options um, that Doran Whittier did in their feasibility study. We just put them in here because we thought it was important that you had gone through this process and we've kind of um, kept up with it and been familiar with this. Uh, it, this is a good basis for the community to, to have gone through. Um, and we will look to see what worked and what doesn't work and use this as a basis to get going with the project. Not only, and more importantly, we'll look at the changes in costs from that feasibility study, but one of the key things that we do during the um, options analysis is to take a compare, uh, look at the comparative project cost analysis. Some project options will garner more re MSB reimbursement than others. So we'll take a close look at that. For example, renovations can get up to five additional percentage points incentives, um, but there's also various other, um, you know, such as if you build a new field house, that would be an eligible cost. But we would look at all the various um, options and kind of look at it from not only an educational standpoint, from what the best option is educationally, but also what the best option is from a physical standpoint. Um, so again, why, why left field? We've talked a little bit about our, our MSBA experience and the wide range of, of different projects we've done, including renovation, renovation addition, and um, new construction on, on occupied sites, campus sites. Uh, you, you've met Jay and you know Jay and, and the expertise that, that Jay will bring to the, the whole design and construction and closeout process. Uh, we've worked with Wakefield before, both, both Lynn and I are, are working there and you know Jim, Jay and Mark, who's proposed as our, our on-site clerk um, in Wakefield. Uh, we have a track record of, of you know, managing these projects successfully and, and building team relationships and that shows in the, the number of repeat clients that we have. And uh, as I said before, we're, we're, we're ready to start working on this, uh, this project right now. Um, I'm working on the public safety, but I have lots of capacity um, to, to, to jump right in. Lynn and Linda have the capacity to jump right in and uh, we, we can start this as soon as, uh, as soon as you guys make a decision. And with that, that's the, uh, the end of our presentation. All right, thank you. Can you uh, bring the screen down? All right. I just have a couple of quick questions. Um, just looking at the presentation, you, you, uh, your team, you, you have done fourteen. Um, let's see, in fourteen years, you've done nine high schools. Is that right? Um, we 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 worked on not not completed nine high schools. Uh, but you're working on nine. We, we, yeah, we 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 we're at. Okay, let me, let me clarify, clarify that for Joe. Joe, we're working on um, nine core MSBA projects now. Of those nine core projects that we're working on currently, four of those are high schools. Okay, but in the 14 years, you've already done yes. nine high schools. Yes. Okay, I, I found that interesting. Lynn, you mentioned that the, you would have a town vote in the fall of 2022? Yes. Mm -hmm. on, 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 on project what? scope and budget costs and uh, moving the project forward. Wouldn't it be, isn't it done after the schematic design? That's the end of the schematic design. And, and that's after the, after the, so you're only talking like a year and a half, we, we would have a schematic design and a preferred option? 20 months. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was a lot longer than that. That's all. <laughs> okay. I think, I think so. A, a lot of the work has been done in the, in the study. So, so you certainly have a head start on, on many other yes. districts and towns. Okay. Yeah. So I think we can work, work pretty quickly through the, the initial. Uh, Over the interviews have been different figures on that. Some different time period. That's all right. Um, and then members of the committee have any questions? Yes, I have one. Um, so Lynn, I, I was with you when you were first doing the websites and how far have you come and who does them now? <laughs> well, 
we have uh, we have a couple of people on our staff that are a lot more technically savvy, <laughs> a lot younger than me. So, uh, but we have a new program. The program that I use was a free free program, <laughs> and um, so it was limited in what we could do on the um, on the um, Walton School. But uh, I don't know, Linda, if you want to bring it up bring up the uh, website just to see what it looks like. But if you look, take a look at our uh, Waltham High School project website, it's called Waltham High School Building Project. That's an example of it. And then um, um, our Florence Roach, we did, we've done that uh, website as well. That's uh, the Groton Dunstable um, project website. Um, I, and you'll I guess see one a lot more advanced and a lot yeah. easier to um, nav navigate through. A lot more. I mean, one of the things I'm concerned about is the time it takes to do all this social stuff and to reach out to the public and all that. So I'm more curious about, you know, not taking yours or Linda's or Shane or Jim's time, but who is it that's going to manage this process? Chip, I can uh, I can mention some working. I'm working on. Um, I, I've sort of been the designated IT person, whether I like it or not. And might not have been shown earlier tonight that I have IT <laughs> skills, but um, but I'm. Uh, uh, there's uh, we have a, a. It's basically a program that publishes things instantaneously. Uh, so I'm right now. I'm working with, for instance, with the uh, the Revere High School, um, and so I work with their town's IT guy who posts things on their town website in tandem, and it's just a quick email and a click of a button, and everything goes live. So it's it's really easy, and um, I haven't found it cumbersome at all. Um, we, yeah, we also have other assistant project managers that we haven't necessarily assigned to the project yet until uh, you know, until we're so, so it is going to be people down below you guys. Yes, there will be. Well, yes, okay. yes, absolutely. Sure. Yep. Yep. And then, like I but said, we had a limited budget on, on on the Walton School, so <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was all on me. So. <laughs> I know, my, and that's my that's spare I guess time. What, I guess that's what concerns me is that it can't be all on you. No, right? no. not not on this one. No, um, um, it's a big project. And like I said a couple of times, it's going to take a team of people because it's going to be a lot of work. I, I would agree. Um, I think you guys know me pretty well with change orders and Shane's starting to get to know me. Lynn, you know me pretty well. As a group and as a team, how do you, and, you know, I think Galvin was probably half the size of what we're talking about now. How do we manage those change orders? How do we make sure we take the town's best interest? And what's your approach to that? What we've done on the uh, Waltham High School project is we have one individual that that's all they do is manage um manage the money in terms of changes and, and tracks everything, um, um, you know, that uh, one, we have a requirement there where if you think that there is going to be a change, it, everyone has to be notified and we, and we follow the process as opposed to after it's happened or um, getting a PCO and being in a situation where we have to backtrack and see if whether or not um, you know we have to argue about the cost of things so we we have someone that sits there and and, um, and looks at just change orders on a daily basis and that's another large project as well thank you all right uh, anybody else have, have any questions don't be shy. I think Wayne does, but he he you got on mic. You know, unmute yourself, Wayne. Wayne, Wayne, you're muted. Hello. Now we can hear you. Oh. Having worked as a facilities director of another town, uh, would your company go to bat for us if we suggested a type of? This may be for Jay. Um, we propose. I, I didn't propose a. HVAC system called displacement ventilation. I'm wondering if Jay might be familiar with that. Jay, you're muted. Jay, you're muted. 
I'm sorry. I'm very technical too. <laughs> um, I am very familiar with the systems, and uh, I must say, um, for the simplicity, the uh, ease of maintenance, the efficiency, the, it, the, I think the cost is is a little bit higher than um, the basics, but. Um, when you factor in the maintenance and the uh, and the efficiency and the comfort of them, I, I really like them. I, I'm I'm all for them. Plus, it's been very the schools that have those now during these COVID times have benefited yes. from them because it keeps the air uh, moving up as opposed to across uh, students. Well, it's just a question for me as far as uh, if something an architect proposed which at the time was totally new to us. Yeah. School department. And they sold it to us and it's turned out to be beneficial. But as far as a company like you guys saying, this is a great idea or it's a bad idea. I think we'd, we would depend on you to help us make those decisions. Yeah, no, as a matter of fact, Wayne, what we're doing now is uh, we've implemented uh, with the COVID times and everything, we've, we've improved on these um, demand ventilation systems by um, we're incorporating uh, all through your BMS system a purge override and it can be a manual override that a, a custodian could do if if uh, a student or somebody was um, sick and uh, you wanted to purge the A wing or the, the gym area before an event you could do a fifth a manual 15 20 minute override the VAV is open the ERV is on the roof go to a uh, uh, full speed and you still have the same high efficient uh, air exchanges and um, air quality. All of these things are a MERV 13 and 14 filters. Mm -hmm. And um, we have the capability now to just do a manual purge on the buildings. You could do post purge, pre purge in the mornings. Um, it's a fantastic system. I, I can't uh, speak highly enough about it. It, it, it. And it's all done on the software. And it's all done through yeah. software. Yes, sir. And we also, on the uh, Waltham High School project, um, because it's very expensive to do some of the recommendations that um, ASHRAE has, has had for, um, you know, during this, this COVID time, uh, it's expensive to run that constantly. So we provided the infrastructure to do that, as Jay is saying, but only do it on an as-needed basis so that your energy costs don't go sky high. You still demand ventilation. You're still going to have your CO2 detectors mm -hmm. and your occupied, unoccupied zones and still work off a of temperature. And, and Wayne, to your point, right, when these high schools get designed, they're very sophisticated systems. And what we're finding with is when we turn that system over, right, with you having an operations slant, sometimes the level of sophistication isn't the same on the school side, right, as it might be. So sure. Jay, could, could you talk a little bit about what we did at, at Bill Ricca High School um, to, to help with the, the operational transition there? So Bill Ricca was a complicated, uh, was, had a lot of equipment, had a lot of ductless splits. We had um, a lot of fan coil units. We had a lot of ERVs, rooftops, and makeup air units. We had a wide variety of equipment there. Plus, you had a, a full um, four-pipe system. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of valves above the ceilings, a lot of equipment controls, summer winter changeover valves. And uh, we, we helped the city a lot, I think, there by uh, we, we drew up the job requirements for a, a maintenance supervisor. We, we participated in the interviews. I sat on the interviews with, with the town for three or four people. And then I trained that person and walked him. I, we, you know, and I know that Jim is not getting any extra money for this time <laughs> that I'm putting in here, but we, we want to make sure that everybody's comfortable with this new building. And I stayed behind there and um, helped the new maintenance guy, showed him, we popped ceiling tiles, we walked the building, we walked the roof, we helped him make filter lists and, and he was comfortable when he took over. I guess from my regard, being a facilities director, you got this modern, totally amazing building. Right. You just, you know, uh, here it is, you know, take over. Right. What? Yeah, exactly. So Jay actually stayed 90 days after the building was, was finished, Wayne, to stay and make sure this person that he helped hire, he trained, and, and to this day, 
Mel Ricker is thrilled with this hire and this, this, this gentleman's exceptional and he does a great job managing the building. All right. Yeah, thank you. And like I said, I've been back to the Walton School. I, I think I was back there just four months ago um, for a uh, for a ch changeover and a and a, and a boiler issues. Um, and I had the uh, control company out there, RP O'Connell, and everything. It looks like a busy place, but it's right up it's right up the street from my house. <laughs> and both both of my kids went there a million years ago. That's pretty yeah. cool. You guys yeah. did a good job. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, right. Lynn. Yep. Jim, what, what's this, Joe, Lynn? What's this four-pipe system they keep talking about? Oh, don't, don't talk. Don't talk. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. The rest of the sorry, kind of an inside going. joke that I had to go with, guys. I, had I knew you were going to say it. The rest <laughs> of everybody, <laughs> there was a permanent commi building committee member on the Galvin School that every single meeting, every single half hour, every single 15 minutes, <laughs> Hey, why don't we have a four pipe system which eventually we stuffed them into one of the pipes that we could find and, uh, that's what happened to him oh they, you wondered what happened to him right uh, uh, sorry i had to uh, uh, and uh if i know this is being recorded so probably we should delete that uh but anyway Lynn, uh, the question I had uh, 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 very quickly, you mentioned the designer selection process and that's a whole different than we did at the Galvin and how we had to go through. Uh, what has your success been getting the preferred option for the designer in your and the nine various high schools that you've done? I will say that up until just recently, I have had success in getting exactly who the um, the community wanted as a designer. I will say that it has become less uh, harder and harder to do that based on the way the um, MSBA's designer selection panel is set up. I will say though that the more forceful you are, the more likely you are to get who you want. And you Why have to- been harder? Because uh, they wanna spread the work around. They want to, you know, they want to. Uh, just go ahead. Yeah, I mean, it's not necessarily uh, consideration of who you might want or who you might think is best for your community. They want to make sure that everybody has a shot and spread the work around to all the architects that are out there. Is my opinion of why it happens like that. But, but um, I would say the last three that I have attended they blatantly went against the community's um, wishes. wishes and hired somebody completely different that wasn't even on their top three, so. Exactly, it seems seems much more political these days than, than what it has been. Right. I, I, I think as Lynn said, you, you know, we'll, we'll help you, we'll coach you guys on, on how to approach it. And, you know, you, you need to go in there with your three representatives on, on the same page. Mm -hmm. And if there's any any difference between the three representatives you have, that that's when you can lose the, the company you want. So, so you yeah. need to make sure that, that you're on the same page going in. This is what I had heard that that you're, it's not as been as successful getting the people person that you want, even though other people have stated to us in the past few days that you know we're going to get it all. That it's it's not guaranteed at all. No, and, not, not and that's a shame. That's a real shame. All right. Uh, any other? We got a, a minute left or so because since we started a little late there. Um, any anybody else have any questions? I guess that'll do it. Thank you so much. Thank Great. you so much, Jim. Thanks, Lynn. Hey guys, really, thank we know you. it's been a long couple of days. So we just want to say thank you for inviting us and letting us, you know offer our, our team up to you tonight. So thank you very much. All right, thanks. Thanks, thanks a lot. Yeah. Just thank right you. before they leave, Joe, yeah, 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 please. Um, we have a meeting Thursday, right? Yes. Yeah. They can't be on the front part of it. Correct. That's Not right. 715. So, so they, I, they I, come I've already on sent an invite to, to all our team, the design team and bond for 715. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Great. See you Thursday, thank guys. You guys. Thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay. Now, 
Um, everybody knows what we have to do between the next, by the end of the day tomorrow, right? Pretty much, we hopefully have, within the next 24 hours. Yep, we are grade of one to 100 on each of the uh, five interviews. Uh, if you wish to discuss it, write, discuss them if you feel you want to. If you don't, if you just want to go and grade, that's fine by me. Uh, it's up to everybody. What do you think? Hey, Joe, you this is Tim. Go ahead, Jason. I Yeah, I was going to just, Chip, what are you going to do? Add all the scores together? Is that how we're going to do it? Right. So we have X amount of scores. We'll, whoever sends them, hopefully everybody will. I'll add them all together and get a total average and then that gets so that's correct me if i'm wrong joe that's 70 percent of the final score correct then the joe's interviews are but the references are five percent and i go his and interviews and references. Them between one and a hundred and, and then and then okay. the and then the what we've already voted on which we already went through is 20 percent right Yep. So here, here's my thought. I'll just pitch this out to the team. We, we may want to establish an equal scoring mechanism because example, say I pick Doran Whittier. I'm not saying I'm going to pick them and I give them a hundred and they're my number one. And then I say left field is my number two at 90. Joe could come back and he could pick left field as his number one, but only give them a 75. He could give his next lowest one a 65, 50. When you add so, those scores together, it's going to mess everything up. We should do 100, 90, 80, 70, 60. So what I'm going to do, Jason, is yeah. take everybody's score because it has to be 1 through 100 because that's what the MSBA is looking for. Yep. And right. then look at 1, 2, one, two 3, three four, 4, 5. Okay, and then come up with that average. That was my question. As, okay. as being – so then we'll come up with a number 1. Yep. And, and work backwards from that. Perfect. Yeah. Because, I mean, some people might – you know, score everything, you know, 90. Right. I could, 90, I could have my number one be 50. Exactly. And now if we just added numbers together, that right. would no, it, it's going to, we're going to go, I'm going to take the okay. numbers, go, because it has to be one through 100, because that's what they want to see. I'm with so you. And I'm going to take one, two, three, four, and look at how they came out. Okie dokie. All right. Yep. Any other questions? Any, any other discussion you want to make regarding the interviews, or do you want to just do your grading? Anybody? It, it just yep. seems like a, a, is that the established process, one to 100? This seems like a pretty broad spectrum. You can give four ones and one 100. And just... Yep. But again, if you do, that's going to be, you're going to have one number one and four number twos. Which you don't want to do. <laughs> Separated by one point. Wait, and then you'll no, be I, know, I know. If you give yeah. four ones and one 100, is that the process? No? That's what it sounds like, but Chip will then. I think the who was one suggestion was pretty good. Yeah. Everybody should take their top one and make it 100. Their second one, 90. Their next one, 80. Their next one, 70. And the last one, 60. Is that, would that make sense for everybody? Yes. That yes. Okay. In other words, and that'll still be one to 100. It's still, it's still going to be one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, Chip will figure it out. As long as it's yeah, five separate no. scores, Chip will figure it out. It'll make it easier for Chip if you put down 100, 90, 80, yeah. 70, 60. Okay? Does that I, make sense? It does make a lot of sense. Joe, I have a quick question about what you were bringing up about PMA, about conflict of interest. Yeah, I have a real problem with it. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I do. I can't. Yeah. I, I, if I'm. I want to have a, an owner's project who represents my town, not seven towns, uh -huh. you know, and that's what they, they do. And I, you know, I, sorry to bring it up, but I, I mentioned this with Steve Mayo too. Uh, and, and I, what I can see a lot of conflict in, in areas where, where we'd run into it. And I mean, I, I can see, you know, they've already got this new access road and what yeah. happens with hemlock and, you know, not every decision they've made up there makes sense for us. Now, some of them do, but I can see a conflict of interest with them arguing with themselves. Mm -hmm. I do that all the time, resources. it's not great. I usually lose. Go ahead, Tim, go ahead. I was just saying duplicating resources. So if, you know, they, they have one guy bouncing between both places rather than us having a dedicated guy, not worrying about what's happening, you know, down the street, 
why is that truck going this way? It should be going to the other place. Yeah. Um, I, I also like when he says, oh, we'll collaborate. I won't want somebody to collaborate. So I want somebody who's on my side. <laughs> you know, but um, that was my concern. And I hated to bring it up, but it was something I it, it just Dude, when they did. It, the I really liked up. everything else they said, though. Yeah, they had a hell of a presentation. They really and a hell did. Of a demeanor. I, know, I like well, this there was one stuff. problem that I had with them. And I'll and I'll be honest with it. And this is I, I don't want to. When we first got that accelerated repair program. And people know this because I told everybody this. I tried to get a hold of them for two weeks and they never responded to my calls at all. Until the until, high school got mentioned. Until the high school project was approved. Huh. And then they were all calling like I, I had a real problem with that. I'm sorry to mention it, but I did. I don't apologize. It's your impression is what you witnessed. My impression was yeah. we weren't we were just a little thing over there. So, so I want to make I, I want to talk about one of the others as well. Um, just to make sure everybody understands. So Doran Whittier did the pre on the architectural side feasibility the pre feasibility at the high school. Okay. Feasibility. If they don't get this they're still going to go for the architecture right it's because of what lynn has said in the past which is why they went for this is because it's not you know just because they did the previous pre feasibility or because they might get in the running for the architectural it's not a guarantee anymore at the msba it's my feel that that you know i'd like them to be in at least in the running for the, I'd like them to put in for the architectural. So I just put that up. They can't be both. Right. Right. right? You can't have it be the OPM and the architect. Right. So it's just keep, I have to keep that in mind as well, because yeah. to me, it's an important piece does, of all. Does, this. does left field have any conflicts here? No. You know? No. No. I heard what do you that, think the workload right now? That's a pretty quick answer. No, they don't. I mean, Shane, who would be a project director, is the only conflict is that he's working on our project and it's the only project he's working on. Yeah. So from a time commitment that way. And um, it just feels to me like they got the inside track here. They've done a lot of work well, for we us. We certainly Wayne. know them. Done a lot of good work. There's nothing wrong with that. Wayne, I, I, mm -hmm. I hate to mention like what we talked about before, but the devil you know versus the devil you don't. That's why I, I know PMA. You know, you, you say there's conflicts with PMA. I think they're a solid company, but. Uh, yeah, but it has to do with the bulk. Because at this point, they're not going to get it. Well, no, that's not. Well, you don't know. Well, that. Everyone has to vote. We don't know Put that. Put your vote in. Put your vote in. I, I like, like PMA a lot. I thought they were a solid yeah. company, but I they hear what were. Joe's saying. And Joe brings up some very interesting points. It's not just Wakefield, it's seven other towns competing for resources for that one school versus us. And we're one town. Valid. And I also, I'll be perfectly honest, also with PMA, I was not with that accelerated program. And I think, Phil, you mentioned this a lot. They never gave us the budget. You know, we'd have to ask you have for to it. asking for it, right, Phil? All the yep. time. Remember, yep. Phil? All the time. Yeah. Uh, like Chip can says, I ask a question about reference? Oh, I'm sorry, Wayne, you go. Yeah, go no, good. Just the devil you know, like Chip says more than once, I, I knew them from a project I worked on. Yeah. And yeah. They, they did a terrific job. Their, okay. their, their initial yeah. staffing was not great. That guy with uh, Kevin, just a, just a solid company that all the, the meetings, every week, meetings for years, meeting after meeting after meeting. You know, you know I guess it's the devil you know. Yeah, I know Doran and Whittier. I've heard they were the architect on that job in North Reading. I, I, I know Hill. Skanska is a solid company. You know, we you... all have great credentials. It's not an easy choice, but we've worked with some of them, and we haven't worked with others. And some are local, and some aren't. Right. So, so we're slanting it towards people we worked with before. Is that the whole joke? No, no. That's just no, one of the factors. Feel whoever one, you're comfortable One factor. With. Yep. One factor, Wayne. Go ahead, Bill. You had a question. On the references that have a percentage of the total score, yeah, it's five percent. Who's who's rating the ref? Because you check them. Are you doing the rating, or you know? Yeah. What I mean? Okay. And at one of the companies, and I don't know if I should mention it or not, but one of the companies got an unsolicited negative reference. 
and we we can't see these references as part because our scores are based on just the presentations that we just sat through for the past two nights. Is that correct? That is correct. Correct. It's separate from any reference. That seventy percent. Your score is based on the interview. The seventy percent. Yep. You actually plus, have ninety five. Yeah. You guys yeah, have okay, actually right. have influence, Phil. You guys, you right. have influence on ninety five percent of the. Right. Right. You've got the first 20, which you've already rated on their right. presentation from the books. That's a number. Yeah. Right? I, we ranked everybody I got on the, okay. to and get I'll, them here. I'll tell you exactly how I scored them. Okay. If well, I got I don't even want to know. I don't even want to know how you scored them. No, I'll tell you how I scored them. I don't want to skew I'm gonna skew my score. I'm afraid you're right. gonna skew my score. Wait, we'll do it Thursday night. I, I won't give you names, but I'll tell you the number that it I called up. If I got one response or two responses or three, re if I got, in other words, I did it on the third or third or third. Yeah, 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 okay. Because I mean, let's face it, if you give a reference, usually it's a positive. You're not going to get somebody with a negative. Right. It's, it's so, rare, right? It's rare. Uh, however we did. However we did get one. Uh, uh, and their score was will not be high. <laughs> um, so if they got... If basically, most of them, I, I, could, I was able to get two people that called me back. So I, they got a 66. Okay. Yep. And, and the, a company got three that called back. They got 100. That's the number. I mean, All I, right. I, yeah, okay. barring anything that negative in the, in the, right. yeah. okay. the one, they yeah. got a zero. Right. Right. <laughs> right. It's, it's tough. To, it's tough. To, that's, that's a good way. It's I, just I, tough I to weigh at references when they're all good. You know, opposed to now we have one, right. but generally a reference is going to be good. How do you weigh them differently? You can't. It should be. If I, if, if I call <laughs> it's 5%. Yeah. If I call and it's 5%, and right. Time to call me back. I, I gave, I, I didn't count them. Yeah. I, you know, I, to, to Wayne's point, like I, Wayne, like I, I've worked with a couple just in my short term, but I, I really just weighed my score off my, what I think their capacity now, you know, projects with high schools and then how their presentation went, you know, it's a job interview and I, I do, uh, I do put a weight in that. So I think, uh, I, I don't think anyone shoot in, in my eyes, I, I, I think we're going to get a good range. I, I'm going to expect we're going to get a good range of scores here uh, based on this conversation. I would agree. All right. Anybody yeah. else? All right. Get your scores in tomorrow. And 190, 80, 190, 80, one through five. So, yeah. Okay. okay. Rank them one through five. Because, John, when you did yours, your scores, it was 95, 94, and 90. <laughs> you were the yeah. best grader ever. So, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> wishful thinking john or uh, what you're used to both that's right that's what we figured john <laughs> and i think it was the same order pretty much as everyone is just different numbers you know? yeah that's all which and is yeah. why that was a it good doesn't really matter we should have a standardized right thing. yeah okay. all right thursday night see you thursday thanks everybody thanks.